Hi y'all! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Ivana and today I'm sharing a thrifted, gifted, and borrowed book haul. So I want to preface this by saying that I have a weird relationship with purchasing books. I don't like to buy books full price and I also don't like to get books when I feel like I could get them from the library. Part of me is like, uh, what if I don't like the book? <laughs> However, I am warming up to the concept of rereading books and having a nice little library in my house of all the books that I really enjoy. So my library room is still not a library, it's just a pile of books and it looks a little cute but it's also extremely disorganized in here and I cannot wait to get mounted bookshelves all along this wall. <laughs> I also think that it's nice to buy books because you can annotate and write all over them and that is especially true for a lot of my favorites. So the categories for this haul are literary fiction by women in translation, classics by women, authors I'm curious about, social media made me do it, and nonfiction about Palestine. Starting with the first category, literary fiction by women in translation. Last year I attempted to do 23 women in translation in 2023. I started out really strong. I blinked in September and all of a sudden it's now February. So I ended up reading 17 out of 23 books and now I'm going to try again to read 24 books in translation for 2024. The challenge is about story graph if you want to join us. I'm really excited about it and I've been really good this month so fingers crossed that I get it done and hopefully these books will allow me to do that. The first book in this category is The Elegance of the Hedgehog by by Muriel Barbary. This book was translated from French and it was originally published in 2008. I got it used roughly for half off at the Brookline Booksmith. What really intrigued me about this book was the title first of all and then the synopsis because it sounds like a Wes Anderson film. Although I'm not normally into Wes Anderson films, I actually love the aesthetic and I feel like for some reason that's what this feels like. <laughs> this book is set in a hotel in Paris and it centers a cantankerous concierge named Renee and a precocious preteen girl named Paloma who happens to live in the hotel. So my friend Emma read this book and she thought it was so funny and she particularly liked Paloma's parts because she writes in her journal and her journal entries start with like profound thought number whatever and I just thought that I would flip to the page where she shares her first profound thought and this is what she says. Apparently now and again adults take the time to sit down and contemplate what a disaster their life is. They complain without understanding, and like flies constantly banging against the same old window pane, they buzz around, suffer, waste away, get depressed, and then wonder how they got caught up in the spiral that is taking them where they don't want to go. The most intelligent among them turn their malaise into a religion. Oh, the despicable vacuousness of the bourgeois existence. Cynics of this kind frequently dine at Papa's table. What has become of the dreams of our youth, they ask, with a smug, disillusioned air. Those years are long gone, and life's a A little taste of the elegance of the hedgehog. I cannot wait to read this. So this sounds really fun. It's described as a philosophical fable, and apparently this originally belonged to Hazel. So thanks Hazel for selling your book. The next literary fiction women in translation book is Bay Sua's Untold Night and Day. So I think I learned about this book because of Jen Campbell's channel and also Hannah May, I believe, talked about it. This book was originally written in Korean. It was originally published in 2020. And this one I bought used as well. And it is about a 28 year old woman who spends her last day at an audio theater for the blind in Seoul, where she works. And she just walks the streets of Seoul at night and it feels very fever dreamy. She's really hot. It's the summertime. I didn't want to read too much about what this was about because it's a little cryptic. People are calling it a detective story, a mystery. It's a tiny. I think this is the kind of book that I would love to read in a sitting and just get lost in. The next book that I got, I actually bought new, but it was 20% off because it was a New Year's Day sale at Porter Square Books. And it is Troubling Love by Elena Ferrante. This was translated from Italian and it was originally published in 1999. It's about a woman in Naples who loses her mom and she keeps getting anonymous phone calls related to her mom's mysterious death. I believe this feels like a psychological mystery that centers mother-daughter relationships. Critics describe it as a story about rage and desire and I'm gonna read you the first line and it goes, my mother drowned on the night of May 23rd, my birthday, in the sea at a place called Spacavento, a few miles from Iturno. I'm intrigued. The next book that I bought used is also by Elena Ferrante 
and it is my brilliant friend which i have already read i actually found the second book in the neapolitan quartet in a little free library and so i thought why not buy my brilliant friend actually reread it because it's been two years now maybe more and then continue the series i want to read this in the summer i feel like these books are perfect for the summer if you have not heard of the series this is translated from italian this book feels like a telenovela it actually comes with like an index of the family members and the characters and this book follows two girls in naples lila and lenu who are best friends it's a story about friendship family dynamics power money and the patriarchy and so we get to see what becomes of these girls and how they lean on each other and jealousy that might exist between both of them there's a lot to unpack in the series and i cannot wait to revisit it this book as i was flipping through it also it came with a boarding pass i love finding little things in books and i found a couple in these this belonged to susan who was traveling from venice to london on october 24th it doesn't say the date but this looks pretty old i hope she had a good time it's so compelling to know that i'm giving this book a new life and that this book has been through the hands of at least two people the next translated book that i have is disoriental this book was originally written in french it was originally published in 1998 and it follows an iranian woman who moved to france with her family when she was 10 years old now she is 25 she's really punk rock and she is kind of tracing her history i think this is a generational tale it feels like a historical yet contemporary novel so we get to read about the history of iran in the 20th century and about a woman trying to find her way and it appears to have won a bunch of awards like the lambda literary award and it was a national book award finalist so i'm really excited to get to this one and inside this book i found a card from paper cuts which is a jamaica plain bookshop which i believe is like fairly recent and so it's nice that somebody purchased this at a local bookstore and then proceeded to sell this book to another local bookstore and now it has found a home in my home. The final Women in Translation book that I bought was Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri. This one was not used, but it was a remainder. So the Brookline Booksmith sold it to me for $6.99. It's a hardcover. This was originally written in Italian and translated by Jhumpa Lahiri herself. So she wrote it in Italian and then she translated it into English, which I think is fascinating. This was published in 2021. I 100% bought this because of Cat from Cat's Field Notes who has sung its praises. It is an existentialist book about, I believe, an unnamed middle-aged woman in an unnamed city. It's written in fragments and I don't want to know that much more about it and I wanted to read it so bad that I selfishly picked it for my book club so I will absolutely be reading this in February and I'm so excited. And I'm going to read you some of the first lines which say, in the mornings after breakfast I walk past a small marble plaque propped against a high wall flanking the road. I never knew the man who died but over the years I've come to know his name, his surname. I know the month and day he was born, and the month and day his life ended. This was a man who died two days after his birthday in February. So for the next section, we have classics by women. I have really been trying to read more backlist books by women, and I have three books that I want to talk about. The first book in this category is Gloria Naylor's Mama Day. I bought this because I adored Gloria Naylor's writing in The Woman of Brewster Place. Her prose reads like poetry, which is normally something that I find annoying, depending on who's writing, <laughs> but with her I love it. Apparently it's set in an island off of Georgia, the state, <laughs> and this is a map. It's so 80s looking, let me, let me show you a close up. I forgot to say that this was originally published in 1988. So in this island, there is a woman named Mama Day. I believe this is set in the 1800s. Do not quote me on that. That could be completely wrong. I didn't want to look up too much about the book, but it is definitely not set in the 80s. And Mama Day has powers that are connected to her enslaved ancestors. I believe she can control lightning and also in her dreams, she can see people's secrets. So this is a fantasy or maybe a magical realism. I'm not sure. And her great niece comes to visit and apparently all hell breaks loose and her niece is an emancipated woman and it appears that she is in danger and mama day has to help her i feel like i have done gloria naylor dirty because i keep talking about how beautiful her writing is and i haven't read anything out loud so i want to read you a little bit of the beginning of the book so you can get a taste for her writing willow springs everybody knows but nobody talks about the legend of safira wade a true conjure woman she could walk through a lightning storm without being touched grab a bolt of lightning in the palm of her hand use the heat of lightning to start the kindling going under her medicine pot she turned the moon into salve, the stars into a swaddling cloth, and healed the wounds of every creature walking up on two or down on four. 
count me in. The next classic that I got was Amy Tan's The Joy Luck Club. I have been trying to read this for the longest time. This was originally published in 1989, so another book from the 80s, and this book is set in 1949, and it focuses on four Chinese immigrant women who live in San Francisco and who have dim sum every Saturday and talk about their lives. I think we get to see them have children, get older, and just talk about life, especially like the issues that they have with their US born daughters. I remember reading an excerpt of this in middle school and being very intrigued and I also read some of Amy Tan's stories with my students so I'm really excited to see what else this book has to offer. The final book in this category is Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. Unlike the previous two books, I actually bought this one new but it was 20% off because I got it at a sale and this was originally published in 1847. I don't want to read too much about the synopsis of this one but I heard that it is depressing, it is creepy, it's a love story or maybe it's just like really up that some people find that it's a love story. I think there's a ghost. I could be completely wrong about it, but I really don't want to know too much about this book. If you read this and you loved it, please let me know, or even if you didn't like it, because I'm curious. But again, leaning into my creepy side this year, as always. <laughs> The next section is authors that I'm curious about. For most of these, I have read from the authors before. They might be favorites or soon to be favorite authors. The first book in this category is Love by Angela Carter. I recently read The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. That was a collection of short stories that were based on fairy tales. This is a short novella originally published in 1971, so it is not a collection of short stories. I have read mixed reviews of Angela Carter's like full works that aren't short stories, but this one I'm really curious about. In the cover, there's a, a line that says, her most effective and memorable novel of the 60s, but this novel was actually written in 1971, so maybe it's a mistake. Either way, the cover is so pretty. I love these covers. This book is about two brothers. One of them marries a fragile young woman out of convenience, and then a love triangle ensues. <laughs> I think Angela Carter is like one of the most crass and vulgar authors that I've read, and so I'm so curious about what is going to happen in this. There's a vague line in the back that also has me going like, what? And it says, they push the limits of sexual license and easy emotion to the ultimate extreme. What does that mean? <laughs> And the first lines of the book go, One day, Annabelle saw the sun and moon in the sky at the same time. The sight filled her with a terror which entirely consumed her and did not leave her until the night closed in catastrophe, for she had no instinct for self-preservation if she was confronted by ambiguities. Same. <laughs> Next we have At the Bottom of the River by Jamaica Kincaid. Jamaica Kincaid is already definitely a favorite. Angela Carter might become a favorite. And this is a short story collection and it's a little bit reminiscent to me of Sandra Cisneros' Women Hollering Creek because all of these short stories, there's 10 total, but I don't think that this is even 100 pages. And they're all really short, short, short stories. My friend Emma gave this to me. She bought it used. I feel like she bought it for a dollar and she didn't realize that she had already bought it. Unbeknownst to her, it has an inscription on the inside, which I want to read to you because I think it's so beautiful. And this was written in December of 1989 and it's written by Pamela. She says, Linda, another woman, another daughter, passing through, claiming her life, as each of us must, to the new year. Love always, Pamela. I like to think that Linda and Pamela were lifelong friends and that they lived happy lives and peacefully died in their sleep at a very old age after having very fulfilling lives. <laughs> Maybe I should edit that out. The description of this book is really vague and I kind of like that. And it is about Caribbean women, it is about childhood, it is about the patriarchy. This book came without a synopsis, which I think again speaks volumes to how well liked Jamaica Kincaid is and how respected she is. I looked this book up on the internet and a line that spoke out to me was, her voice is by turns naively whimsical and biblical in its assurance, and it speaks of what is partially remembered and partially divined. Which, yes, yes, whatever that means, it's clearly a really good book. So. I'm getting this on audio through Libby and I'm going to be tandem physically reading and audiobooking it. The next books that I got were an Anne of Green Gables box set. It was the first four books of the series. I left it in the other room and my foot is asleep, so I'm going to show you a picture here. <laughs> And I don't have anything else to say about Anne of Green Gables other than it is delightful and I'm saving this box set for a rainy day. I actually had so much fun last night starting to read the second book in the series. I just find Ellen Montgomery's writing so funny and whimsical and I am just looking forward to taking my time with 
the series and reading it is a little pick me up i also have a quick question about box sets do i keep the packaging like do i keep the little box or do i toss it please help i also don't really care about my books matching i'm likely going to continue reading the rest of the series and the box set only goes to the fourth book and then i'm gonna have to buy a different edition but that doesn't really bother me the last book that i picked up that is from an author that i'm curious about and i suppose i'm curious about all the authors i'm reading but I feel like Sigrid Nunez could become a favorite based on what all of my favorites have been saying about her. And this is The Feather on the Breath of God. I love this cover, it's so pretty. I actually bought this used, but two days prior, I had seen it at the Harvard Coop and I was like, oh my gosh, like this book looks so good, but I don't wanna pay for a full price book. And it was fake when I saw it and it was just like seven or eight dollars. I think my biggest influencer to read Sigrid Nunez is Kat from Lit With Kat. She loved The Friend and I really wanna read it. That's a more recent book. This is actually one of Sigrid Nunez's breakout books, if I'm not mistaken. This was originally published in 1995 and it is about a woman who is mixed race. Her mother is Chinese Panamanian and her father is German. It is also about ballet. It is also about the life of immigrants, especially the immigrants that she encounters in her life. Not just her mother and father, but her lover who happens to be Russian. This sounds a little bit serious and sad, which honestly, I don't need any more serious and sad books this winter. So I'm gonna wait till the spring or the summer to read it, but I'm so excited. I might actually read The Friend first because it seems like a sad book that is a little bit more uplifting, but who knows, maybe this is hopeful as well. And that is A Feather on the Breath of God. The next section is Social Media Made Me Do It and it is only two books. Thankfully, I try not to be swayed as easily by social media, but you know, we're all human. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes some books are worth the hype. The first book is This Is How You Lose the Time War. So this book was originally published in 2019, but it had a resurgence in 2023 when somebody tweeted about how great it was and it got retweeted so many times and the book became a bestseller again. I saw this at Trident and I didn't want to pay full price for it, so my friend Kelly graciously lent it to me. I want to read this soon. I like that it's short. It's a book about time travel, it's sapphic, and a lot of people have said that they get lost in the plot, but that it's still really good. And and very romantic and I like romance sometimes <laughs> and it's also written I believe in a series of letters which I think is really nice the other book I got that is a social media book that I keep seeing everywhere but I don't think that I've ever seen an actual review I just keep seeing it on TikTok like being flashed is she and her cat this one is translated from Japanese but it didn't make it into my women in translation list because it's written by a man the illustrations were done by a woman and the translation was done by a woman and it's also the same translator Ginny Tapley Takemori who translated convenience store women but that's okay and this is a story that reminds me a little bit of what you are looking for is in the library and maybe before the coffee gets cold and this is a series of four interconnected stories about women and their feline companions it is described as life affirming and i think i could use a little bit of that i really want to read more books with cats in the covers and so i think i'm going to read this in february i might do a vlog with books with cats on the cover or i might actually just read one every month speaking of cats <laughs> Come on. She and her cat. And apparently, I didn't know this, but it's based on a multi-award winning short film, which I gotta watch after reading this. And the illustrations are so cute. Look at this. How cute is that? So lastly, we have our nonfiction books. There are two of these and both of them are about Palestine. It is really outrageous that Palestinian civilians keep getting bombed on a regular basis. Gaza is in shambles and I really find the situation completely disgusting and unacceptable and not to mention heartbreaking so I do want to read more about the situation so I can educate myself particularly when it comes to the colonization of Palestine and how that came to be as well as like the US's role in it. The first book that I'm picking up for this and I started reading it already as you can see there's tabs I borrowed from a friend and it is the hundred years war in Palestine. I hit History of Settler Colonialism and Resistance from 1917 to 2017. And this is by Rashid Khalidi, who is actually the great-great-nephew of the former mayor of Jerusalem before the Zionists colonized the area. And it talks a lot about the displacement of Palestinians at the hands of Zionists and Israelis. And the thesis of this is that the war has always been colonial in nature. And it talks about how Zionists have waged a war against the Palestinian people. And how none of this would have been possible were it not for Britain and 
the US. And I started buddy reading this with the cats, but we, well, I found that it assumed that I had a lot of background knowledge that unfortunately I did not have. So Cat from Cat's Field Notes recommended, except for Palestine, which is the other book I got. I got this 20% off on a New Year's Day sale. The full title is Except for Palestine, The Limits of Progressive Politics. And this book shares more about the US's role in the occupation of Palestine and how United States and progressives have similar values when it comes to immigration and race and women's rights. But when it comes to Palestine, for some reason, United States and straw line there. And I'm really mad because Everend, I guess I listen to too many audiobooks. They don't tell you what the limit is. But I was reading both of these on audio and it just kind of like told me I had reached a limit and I couldn't listen until January 29th. So I'm excited to pick these back up. Kat recommended that we read the first chapter of this because it does provide a lot of context for what Rashid Khalidi is saying in this book. And so I think I'm gonna read both of these. I'm gonna tandem audio and physically read both of these so that I can educate myself a little better. So these are most of the books that I talked about. As you can see, there are a lot. I am really excited for my reading this year. I'm glad that I was able to purchase these in a sustainable way. I'm so excited for the year ahead, getting to know what I like and continuing my journey on booktube. Let me know which ones you think I should start with and if you have any other recommendations for me. I hope you're having a lovely February and I'll catch you in my next video. Peace! <laughs>